The government has been defending the evacuation from Afghanistan this summer as the Taliban took over after a whistleblower called it dysfunctional and chaotic. Raphael Marshall told MPs that it was clear some of those left behind had since been murdered by the Taliban. He says thousands of emails pleading for British help went unread and the, that the Foreign Secretary at the time, Dominic Raab, was slow to make decisions. Mr Raab has denied the claims. Here's our diplomatic correspondent, James Landell. This was Kabul airport last summer, as thousands sought to flee the advancing Taliban. Amid chaotic scenes, Britain and other Western powers tried to evacuate those it could. But according to a whistleblower, there was chaos in London too. The Foreign Office Crisis Centre was handling requests from Afghans who were at risk because of their links to the UK. A young official working there called Raphael Marshall said the process of choosing who could be evacuated was arbitrary and dysfunctional. He said up to 150,000 people applied for evacuation under this scheme, but he estimated fewer than 5% of these people have received any assistance. It is clear that some of those left behind have since been murdered by the Taliban. One weekend in August, when these Afghans were trying to get out, Mr Marshall said in London there weren't enough staff, with too few working overtime. On one afternoon, he was the only person monitoring emails, thousands of which remained unread. Mr Marshall also said Dominic Raab, then Foreign Secretary, delayed taking decisions until he had all the facts set out in well-presented tables, an interpretation Mr Raab disputed. In terms of presentation, of course, with the volume of claims coming in, uh, I make no apology for saying I needed uh, the clear facts for each case uh, presented precisely so that we could make swift decisions. We already knew that many Afghans had struggled to get in contact with the Foreign Office here. MPs had raised many of their cases. What this evidence does is tell us what was going on inside, and it's a story of a system that just wasn't working. And this afternoon, MPs got to ask the men responsible why. If this isn't what failure looks like, and I will come on to the specifics of why I think the civil service crisis system clearly failed in this, what does failure look like? As I say, we successfully evacuated 15,000 No, I'm we sorry, wish, this isn't about the headline stats. This is about the system, the bureaucratic civil service system that should be running a proper crisis centre, fully staffed. We, we declared a crisis. <coughs> We went through the, uh, through the gears in putting more people in. We and as for going on holiday for 11 days during the crisis, at the same time as the Foreign Secretary... Yeah, I've reflected on that, and if I had my time again, I would have come back from my leave earlier. And what of those animals rescued from Penfarthing's charity in Kabul, given, some claim, priority over human beings? Mr Marshall said this was at the instruction of the Prime Minister. Downing Street said that was untrue. Mr Johnson said... No, that's complete nonsense, but what I can tell you is that I think that the operation of pitting to, to, to airlift 15,000 uh, people out of Kabul uh, in the way that we did over the, the summer was one of the outstanding military achievements uh, of, the, uh, of the last 50 years. But a letter emerged tonight from Mr Johnson's then parliamentary aide suggesting that, well, she at least was involved in facilitating the animal's rescue. What both government and whistleblower agree is that not enough people were evacuated. And there are many Afghans with links to Britain, still not free to leave, still not free from danger. James Landell, BBC News. Well, let's talk to our Afghanistan correspondent, Sikanda Kamani, who is in Kabul for us this evening. How much do we actually know about the fate of those people who asked for help and didn't get it? Well, some of them have reconciled themselves to the idea of living under the Taliban, but others are still looking for ways out, either because of the current economic crisis here or fearing retribution from the Taliban. Amongst those stranded here is a former British Army interpreter who I've been in contact with. He's living in hiding. He submitted his application months ago but has yet to receive any response, though I understand some other interpreters have been evacuated in recent weeks. But this process has been uh, particularly difficult for those Afghans who weren't directly employed by the British or other foreign governments, but who played important roles in civil society here, journalists, activists. And many of them have travelled across the border to Pakistan on short-term visas, hoping then to find uh, Western countries that they can travel on to. But many are really struggling to 
to get any results with that, the British government had announced a policy to accept up to 20,000 vulnerable Afghans over the next five years. That uh, Applications for that has not yet started. As for reports of killings, well, it's been very hard to verify incidents. We do know of at least one incident in which an individual who used to work for the security forces linked to Britain was killed, however. Sikandar Kamani in Kabul. Thank you.